today I have with me a long range S that can actually haul in a lot of stuff. And by long range, I mean over 500 kilometers, which for Nepal is more than enough. I have the BYD E6, the all new facelifted version. So let's check it out. Big bells first. Coming to the back of the body, just like in a regular petrol car, you have the AC charger and you have a DC charger. The car charges up to 80% in about 30 minutes if you can find a 60 kilowatt hour charger. So our NEA DC charger should do just about the trick, but otherwise it's a pretty long wait. engine compartment of the BYD E6 and it's a lot like what other EVs are. You have fluids here on the left hand side. Wiper fluids, hydraulic fluids, brake fluids, fluids to cool the fan. We do have a fan here, a radiator. Um, it's for the AC. And then you do have a 12 volt battery here. The 12 volt battery comes standard in EVs because you have a big battery underneath but that is rated at 400 volts and imagine what would happen if you connect a 400 volt battery into your cell phone it would short circuit and burst for sure these 12 volt batteries are used mainly to power appliances and sensors all around your car so I'm talking about things like your music system, your headlights, your charger ports in the car, sensors, auto headlight sensors, rain wiper sensors, things like that. And then you have a fuse box on the side. So this is a high voltage converter. It basically what this does is it will change alternating current that you get in our transport wireage across the city into DC that is used by the car and is stored in the battery cells underneath the car. Something interesting about the E6 is that it is built on a 400 volts architecture system. So basically, the higher the voltage, the faster the car can charge. 400 is usually what most EV cars use. Uh, you have Teslas, you have Kias, you have Hyundais, all using between 300 to 400 to 500 systems it's just the new cars and i'm talking new as in like ionic 5 new ev6 new ev9 that kia just released a year ago new that use the 800 volt architecture and so those things can supercharge real quick
quick walk of the exterior looks. These are LED daylight running lights, but the headlight itself isn't. There is again no front grill. EV cars don't need air intake, but there is a radiator in there. And so there are vents down here for AC intake. Cruise control sensors are here. You have your number plate there. You have a nice BYD badge here. It looks like a whole cutout here can be made for a front facing camera. And there is a chrome wrapping on the front grille. The headlights are quite huge on this car. The chrome wrapping, I think it's a theme for the overall E6. It wraps around the side as well. There's definitely a sense of the chrome wrap highlighting the body lines of the car. You have space written on this car. And with a 2800 millimeter wheelbase from here to there, that definitely is correct. Again, further chrome treatments at the back here, wrapping around the rear lights as well, continues right across the car and onto the other side. The rear lights also have a bit of chrome finishing to it, and it's got these long lines. They're also LED, by the way. In fact, all of the car's lights are LED, except the headlights. The headlights are halogen. Even the interior lights? Like, this is LED. That is LED too. Quite interesting. 17-inch alloy wheel comes standard in this car. You have disc brakes, again, in all of the car's wheels. The front disc brakes are actually ventilated disc brakes. And then, I think something good about this car is that it has good tire wall sizes that really helps soak up Kathmandu bumps on the highway as well as in the city. With a car so large, I think it was really nice of BYD to put a rear windshield wiper. <laughs> yeah, so dusty. But this is definitely one of those must-have things in Kathmandu traffic. And then you have mirrors, but these are manually adjusted. Five hundred and eighty liters available. That is huge. Something great about this car is that it also has a spare tire. It is not the same size replacement as outside, but it's still a 17-inch replaceable tire. You do not have any space below the floorboard. And this is what a backpack looks like. Wow. Do you want to see how big the interiors are? Yeah, I'm not even joking. And I can bring my foot up here. I think one more person would still fit in here. I'm not kidding. I didn't figure out how to get the seat folded, but if this had been folded too, I don't know how big this would have been. <laughs> anyway, this is what 580 liters look like. So yeah, it's massive. <laughs> As for cameras on the E6, well, there's only one and it's at the back. So you have some hard plastics here, you have vents to defog the glass here, you have automatic mirror controls 
adjustment lock unlock and the four buttons and this is the lock you have decent cup holder sizes you can add more back here too apparently your ac vent is here open close this is for the brightness of your speedometer and this is the angle of your headlight Kathmandu this is great you do have a small compartment here These are just buttons on the right hand side. You have a mode button, you have a call accept button. This is for your media controls and your volume. Starting the car is pressing your foot on the brake and then pushing the start button. That's the starting animation. So as for the driver instrument cluster, you have a mix of both analog as well as digital and again analog on this side the right side is straight up speedometer goes up to 240 kph but i think this car maxes out at like 130 on the left hand side though is a bit interesting the unit is kilowatt so this is definitely a power measurement on the left hand side so you have a charge this is when the car regens the speed the tack will actually go down and the amount of power the amount of kilowatt your car is consuming is shown by the dial here and in the middle you have other information you have your directions you have your temperature outside what mode the car is in if i change it to reverse neutral or drive and then you have an eco mode the larger on the top right is the region. It's either standard or larger. Interesting choice of words, I guess. And then you have your average consumption, 20.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. I've been testing the car a bit, so this is definitely an above average number. And then you have basically your fuel tank, your your range tank, I guess. An estimated range of 393 at 78%, so at 100%, I'm definitely going to say this will hit above 500. The WLTP estimated range for this is about 522 kilometers. I do not think it will hit exactly 520. It might actually go above depending on your driving, but it'll definitely go above 500 is what I can say. And I also have the AC on, by the way, so... On the right hand side here, you have your wipers. This is for the back. And this is for the front. You have different modes. And then on the left hand side, you have the indicator. And if I twist the knob, I will get headlamps on a dipped beam position light and this is an auto and if I press this button on the side it'll show me my trip way at the bottom There's a very piano black interior theme going on and again just like the exterior chrome outline finishes seem to go without. I like this badging in the middle. It's a bit dusty. Uh, I was driving with the windows open but this is definitely a nice coated dashboard like it's plastic but it's definitely a nice woody plastic finish that they have. Piano black finishing most places, so it is definitely a fingerprint magnet. Um, you'll have to be wiping this quite a lot. You do have a place for your phone here, but it is not 
a wireless charger changes for your region here your emergency this is for ac hvac controls front and rear wiper oops uh, this is for your multimedia system your parking sensors and then this is just traction control oh so something i learned new if you press that it's either snow mode or eco mode hmm interesting and then you have a rotating style gear knob it light up depending on what gear mode you are in and you press p for park electronic parking brake you have a quick cup word maybe for your cup phone but there's no wireless charging here and then you have two cubbies here so you can definitely put some water bottles in the middle smaller water bottles of course coming on to the center armrest it's a good space i've put in my camera gear here but fits in quite a bit you have a 12 volt 120 watt place and you have two usb-a adapters On the passenger side, piano black, plastic, but small space for your phone, bottle holder. Then once you go in, you have ample legroom. Decent sized glove box, though the opening isn't quite deep, it's a bit high. And you have sun visors with a mirror here. Uh, looks like you can also take the sun visor out. Nice. It feels really spacious on the inside. Hard plastics, but soft touch leatherette material and a cubby here where you actually touch it. You have a speaker. There are four speakers in the car and you have a cubby for a water bottle. It would probably fit a larger water bottle too, but there's more space back here too. And then the back row. Back row occupants will get one air vent. Again, more branding here, build your dreams. And at the bottom, there are two USB-A ports for usage. The car is so spacious, it's amazing. With a 2800 2.8 meter wheelbase, 2800 millimeters, you can get all the legroom in the world. This is my driving position in the front, and <laughs> it's like a good half foot gap for my knee. If I wanted to show you from the side, like this is ample knee room. I have good leg feet room too and head room too because of the shape of the exterior is quite on the larger side back here. The seats are quite comfy, not gonna lie. I think something that would make the cabin feel bigger than what it already is, is it's missing some sort of sunroof and any light from the top i think would give this interior cabin an even more palatial size feeling even if the floor bed isn't entirely flat there's a bit of a dent here <laughs> there's so much legroom back here it really doesn't matter so again same treatment back here what I do miss in this car though is a rear, it's not because of the plastic, but there is actually no rear center armrest. I'm not sure why BYD cut costs there, but it's definitely something I miss. Uh, this car does have Isofix points, so in case you want to attach a baby seat or anything, it's there. Your hand holders do get a coat holder here so that's good something else that the car has is 
adjustable seat belts in case you have differing heights. Do you hear that? It's the pedestrian warning system. It shuts off after 30 kilometers per hour, but it's a really loud whining sound. Honestly, for Nepal, I think it's great. No one here is an EV coming anyway. I definitely wish that there was a dead pedal here like break foot and then a dead pedal it's just a bit awkward not having just leaving your foot here <laughs> The one thing I can feel straight off the bat about this car is that I would absolutely love this car on long distance drives. One bigger battery, longer range with a estimated full charge range of over 500 kilometers. I feel like that would keep my mind at ease but also the driving dynamics of this car just feel so pleasant. Like it's a big thing on the road but I'm really not feeling all that difficulty in navigating this car if the roads were wider, which naturally our highways are. Our the highways aren't like tiny gully roads that Kathmandu have, so I'm also really liking how smooth the accelerator pedal is, like no joke. <laughs> it's quite smooth and receptive. It's not so sensitive that the moment you touch your accelerator pedal, it's quickly gonna whoosh away. So but I will now test putting my foot down. It's a 70 kilowatt hour motor and so you do not have bat braking acceleration but you do have an acceleration that's enough to like take you up to speed. I am now approaching the sort of outskirts of the valley which means I can test the car for a bit more high speed stability. How the car reacts to more acceleration, braking. Braking just felt pretty okay. Alright, I'm gonna stop right on this bend to see how good or bad the pickup. Alright, I have come to a stop. Now, put on the accelerator. I feel like it did a pretty good job of just pulling it uphill after that. Yeah? We're getting stuck in the middle of the road. And the car just pulled. So, I think it's going well. <laughs> I don't 